welcome to High Vibe Honey for the week of the 16th of July, 2018. I am your host, Gala Darling. I decided to do like a purple look today. I hope that you enjoy it. And let's get into these cards. As always, the cards are fucking beautiful. And I'm very excited to show you what's coming up for you for the week. And it's amazing how the cards every week are really unfurling and they're blossoming in this extremely coherent way, which really shows me that what's happening for me is what's happening for you is what's happening for all of us. And so there are some really good things around the corner. I hope that you had a great week. Let's see what's coming up this coming week. So the first card that I pulled is an oracle card from Gabriella Rosie's Bad Bitch Affirmations deck. And this is what came up. Babe, you are exactly where you need to be. Mm. I love this because it really speaks to, I think, the uncertainty that a lot of us are feeling right now where for me and for a lot of other people that I know, it kind of feels like everything is up in the air right now. Everything is in flux. Everything feels a little bit uncertain, unstable, like we're walking on shaky ground. Kind of like when there's an earthquake and afterwards there are those aftershocks and the ground is still rumbling. I think for a lot of us it feels like we're walking on that, trying to find our footing, trying to figure it out. And this card just reassures us that it's all gonna be okay. We have exactly what we need and we're exactly where we need to be. And it leads us so beautifully into the cards for the week. So this week I used a different deck. This is the back of them. These are Holly Simple Tarot cards. She is on Instagram. I think that's how I found her. Her deck is really cool. It's very, it's super weirdo and I just love it. And I also love that both of these decks that I'm using in this week's reading are by female artists. I think it's important to support female artists. I put the links for them below. If you want to pick up your own set of them, then I really encourage you to do so. They're both really beautiful. So the first card from Holly Simple's deck was The Magician. Mm. So The Magician is such a beautiful card because The Magician really says that we can have, do, be, whatever we want. And that's really the crux of my whole life philosophy. That's what I believe. We can be, do, have, whatever we want. And this card just reassures us of that fact. So the thing with The Magician is it often comes up when we are starting a period of transformation, when we're really about to change some major things in our lives, we're about to completely shift our focus and really start fresh. It's the beginning of a new life cycle. So the magician says that we can create whatever we want in our lives and that is such a beautiful message to come through and I know that so many of us are in a period of transformation and transition right now. So the magician coming up is really perfect. One thing that the magician does say is that it's important for us to really focus on our goals and make sure we're very clear about what they are so that we don't get distracted, right? So sometimes when the magician comes up, we have a few different projects on the go. There's several several things that we're trying to work on, we're manifesting, we're creating, we're getting our hands dirty in the world. But what this card says is just make sure you're really focused on what your goals are so that you don't get distracted. So that is the major message that I want you to take away from the magician this week. I know that you already know that you can have what you want and that you can be what you want and you can do what you want. You already know this deep down, but this card just reminds us to be really clear about our desires and not be distracted. So maybe that means, you know, if you wanna make time to work on your book, that you put it into your Google Calendar. Maybe it means that you set yourself a number of words as a goal to hit every day. Maybe it means that you slow down your social engagements for a little while so you can get this done. So whatever is going on in your life that you really wanna to commit to, that you wanna put energy into, that you wanna put your passion behind, it's important not to lose focus and to create systems in your life that will help you in creating this thing or making this change. So that is what the magician is reminding us of this week. Now, our second card of the week is the Eight of Cups reversed. So it would normally be like this, but I pulled it reversed this time. And so the Eight of Cups is really a follow on from what we have been looking at for the past few weeks. The Eight of Cups reversed is about being slightly afraid to walk away from what you know and what is comfortable and to move on to something better. 
it can be a little bit one foot in, one foot out. You're not totally sure what your best choice is at this point. And sometimes the Eight of Cups means that you feel like you're walking away from something and there's not that sense of closure that you would really like. And so this card can kind of just make us feel a little bit aimless. We can be a little restless. We can be a little confused about what the best thing is for us to do. But as I've been saying for these past few weeks, the best thing always to do is to take the risk. And so I want to encourage you to do that this week. But this card really just says that you're a little bit unsure about making this change and that's okay. Who wouldn't be? It's a big change that you're about to make. I'm in the exact same boat as you this week. So it's okay for you to be like, oh, what the fuck am I doing? Like this, this past week or so I've really been, when I hang out with my friends, I look at them and I'm like, what am I doing? Like, why am I doing this? This is insane. But I also know that it's the right thing for me to do. And so you are probably in a similar position. So this is just like, you're just not sure about that moving on piece. But deep down, you know that it's the right thing to do. And especially in conjunction with our third card of the week, which is the devil reversed. This is him in his full glory. Look at that card. It's so cute. And this is the reversed version. So the devil reversed says that we are becoming aware of the things that are holding us back. The addictions, the old patterns, the old habits that keep us stuck, that make us feel bad, unhealthy, um, or that are just an unhealthy coping mechanism. And the devil reversed says that we are becoming aware of these things and we now know that we really need to make a change. Which is amazing timing because literally this week I launched a new class called Illuminated, which is a five day tapping class to help you break old habits. I actually started it so that I could get support while I was tapping to stop eating sugar. So I have not been eating sugar for about four or five days now and I'm feeling really good. And this class is amazing for anybody who wants to um, quit sugar, go vegan, stop overeating, stop smoking, cut down on the drinking, whatever it is, whatever unhealthy old habit you want to let go of, um, Illuminated is great for and the link is below. But anyway, the devil reversed says that we're now becoming aware of those things that are holding us back, those old habits, those old attachments, and it's time for us to start letting go of them. So the devil reversed can also be referring to the Buddhist principle of detachment, which is where you don't allow other people's behavior or conditions of your life to dictate how happy you are. And really living in this way is the ultimate freedom and it's the ultimate way to experience true happiness is to not have this state of conditional living. And so it's interesting, this is something I've really been looking at this week and really practicing this week. This may be something that you have been learning or experiencing as well, where as long as your happiness is dependent on somebody else, you'll never really be happy. Nobody else can perform enough tricks to keep you happy on a consistent basis. You can't outsource your joy, that is your job. And so the devil reversed really tells us that we need to be aware of that. Firstly, we need to do a bit of an audit of our lives and look at what's not working, where our unhealthy habits are and really make an effort to change them. And secondly, to recognize that nobody else can make us happy, that it's our job and that the conditions of our lives or the people in our lives really are inconsequential, that it's up to us to feel good. That is fully our responsibility. And so that's what that card says to me and I hope that that is really resonant for you. So what we're going to tap on today is this devil reversed and we're going to tap on the idea of our happiness being dependent on someone else. So this is a goodie because all of us do this to some degree or another and it would be so beautiful to detach from that so that we can really operate independently of anybody else's influence. When you don't need anybody to behave in a certain way, you don't need them to do or say anything in order for you to be happy, that is true freedom. And so that is what we're gonna tap on today. So as always, I would like for you to grab your water. Here is mine. 
Do you think Perrier will sponsor me one day? I mean, I would love for that to happen. I want you to grab your water, take a big swig, and then we are going to get started on this tapping. It's gonna be fantastic. Okay, we're going to start on the karate chop point right here along my rainbow snake. Have you seen this? My rainbow snake? Pretty cute. Okay. <laughs> tapping here. Repeat after me. Even though I have a habit of outsourcing my joy, I deeply and completely love, accept, and forgive myself. Even though sometimes it feels like I won't be happy unless I get a text or good comments on Instagram or my partner gives me a compliment or my mother is supportive I forgive myself even though I allow these other people to dictate how I feel about myself I deeply and completely love, accept, and forgive myself. Because I didn't really realize I was doing this. And I wasn't aware that I could take responsibility for my joy in this way. But now I am. <laughs> and so it's time to start. It's time to run my own life and not allow my moods to be dictated by other people's behavior. Because the truth is, no one else can really make me happy. Only I can do that. And I'm going to start right now. Okay, I say we have another swig of water because this is actually a really big topic. I didn't even realize it when we started and then I was like, oh shit, this is major. Okay, so let's drink. Whew! I gotta move my hair around. It's that good. It's that good. Okay, starting on the top of the head. Even though I have been outsourcing my joy for a really long time, I deeply and completely love and accept and forgive myself. Even though I have been giving my power away based on what other people do, I forgive myself. Even though sometimes it feels like I'm just in a bad mood, until I get a text message I like or something good happens on Instagram someone gives me attention or I eat some sugar or any number of other coping mechanisms I accept myself as I am Even though this is how most people run their lives, simply reacting to what everyone else is doing around them, I recognize that this is not healthy. I recognize that this is not what I want to do. I want to be in control of my own vibration. I want to take responsibility for myself. And that means that I have to create my own happiness. That I have to learn that other people are irrelevant to my joy. Because when they're irrelevant to my joy, 
I get to be in charge of how I feel. If I don't feel good, I will feel empowered to change it. I will remember that I can do something to feel better. And I won't be sulking around, <laughs> hoping that someone will do something to make me feel better about myself. I will be able to run my own life. Even though I've been outsourcing my joy for a long time, maybe even my entire life, I recognize that it is not working. I recognize that I need to do something different. And this is the first step. I am willing to give up my attachment to other people's moods. I am ready to stop relying on them to make me feel good. I am ready to let it go. I am ready to detach fully. I am ready to take responsibility for my own happiness. To change my moods when I need to. And to allow myself to fully feel good no matter what is going on around me. And so it is. Deep breath in. Exhale. Mm, that was delicious. Yes, we all needed that. Don't you think? We all needed that. So, that's our high vibe honey. That's our high vibe honey for the week. I'm really excited that all of these cards have come up. I think they're all really, really useful. So let's do a quick recap. You are exactly where you need to be is the first thing to remember. Don't sleep on this one. It's all good. The magician tells us we can do, be, have whatever we want, but to maintain focus, don't get distracted. Remember what it is that you are going for. Eight of Cups reversed says we have some fear and some trepidation about the changes we're about to make, but that's okay. Breathe, breathe. And if in doubt, watch last week's High Vibe Honey. There's a lot of tapping for fear of stepping into the new, which will help you so much. And finally, the Devil reversed says, stop relying on other people, conditions, you know, bad old habits to make you feel good. They're not working. And that's what we tapped on today. And I hope it felt amazing for you because it felt really good for me. Have a beautiful week. I love you so much. Next week's High Vibe Honey will be coming to you from beautiful Los Angeles. I'm so excited. I'll be in a totally new setting. It will be a different background. It'll be amazing. <laughs> and I'm really excited about it. So I will see you later on. Have a beautiful week. I love you.